Look at this gorgeous tiger ring. I'm going to have to have a go at making one. Hey guys, remember this video from a few weeks back? If you didn't see it, the owners of this website sent me examples of their jewellery and I used one of them as inspiration to do my own thing. And they've done it again with this great ring. This stunningly designed tiger is made from sterling silver and its eyes are inlaid with 24 karat gold. They've even used copper to highlight the tiger's nose. It's a genuinely beautiful piece. As before, these guys haven't charged me a penny and they haven't asked for anything in return. Yes, I'm sure they want me to mention their products, but I don't mind doing that really, as I think this is something that my viewers might enjoy. But also, I think they're challenging me to once again have a go at doing something similar, because they know it's not going to be easy this time. Using Fusion 360, I made a basic ring band. I'm no artist or sculptor, so I turned to Thingiverse for a basic structure to work off. I came across this excellent low res sculpture of a tiger, and that gave me a great starting point. Using Blender, I imported the tiger and with simple boolean tools, chopped away everything except the tiger's head. I find scaling things tricky in Blender, but having built the ring in Fusion, I was confident that the sizing would be good. I cut away the inside of the mouth, again with boolean tools, and as the eyes were a little sunken, I decided to add new ones. It was at this point that I realised the head wasn't symmetrical enough for my needs, so again I used boolean tools to fix the issue. Now it was just a matter of using my very basic blender skills to try and add a little depth to the piece. But I have to admit, this is also my favourite part. At this point I was liking it, but it somehow wasn't right. To me a tiger isn't a tiger without stripes. But could I get away with adding them? There was only one way to find out. I 
I thickened the band at some point because it was too thin. But now it looked a little bit too wide and something was missing. So what else could I add but a stripe? Not bad. I'm fairly pleased with that. I'm still experimenting with this castable resin, which for now will remain nameless, though at a later date I'll come back and link to it right here. Clean up is easy thanks to the Anycubic Wash and Cure. My Enigu Mars did a nice job of printing. They use silver, so I'll do the same. Yes, this resin is certainly growing on me. It's casting very nicely. Other than a very slight flashing line, it was a very clean silver casting. Now for the boring bit. Lots and lots and lots of sanding with very fine paper. And that is something I'm really quite pleased with. Thanks to careful sanding, I've been able to keep the majority of the stripes and also add a little relief shading. I'm pleased with the effect. Is it as good as the professional piece? Well, I guess that's down to the individual. I like both in honesty, but I have to give the edge to the professionals. Theirs is clearly more skillfully designed and the copper and gold touches are something I just can't do yet, but maybe one day. In the meantime, if you want to buy one of these rings, just visit their website. There's a link in the description. Now, this ring is a little more pricey than last time thanks to the precious metals involved. So I've managed to wangle a 20% discount for my viewers. So again, Look to the description for the link and the discount code. 
So that's it for now guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. Take care and thanks for watching.